Okay, so Dare You Mechanical Keyboards is a brand from China that makes mechanical keyboards at a very aggressive value for money price. And their local Singaporean reseller slash distributor, I'm not sure which one it is, recently hit me up and asked if I would be interested in reviewing their keyboards. And of course I said yes, because well, I'm not gonna turn down a chance to basically mess with more mechanical keyboards, but there is something interesting about me in terms of my relationship with this brand. So I don't think Dare You knows this. I don't think the local retailer knows this. I don't even think, I don't think anyone else except me knows this. My first ever a mechanical keyboard, my virgin mechanical keyboard experience was with a Dare You keyboard. I bought one from China, uh, me and my dad were basically just looking for one and there were a multitude of keyboards which felt like mechanical keyboards but were just membrane keyboards underneath. But this brand was the only one we could find that was actually mechanical. It had cow blue switches, had a rose gold plate underneath, had a white keycaps uh, and it broke on me in about two months which isn't a great start to this video but that was six years ago. I was 14 at the time and I bought a Dare You 10 keyless mechanical keyboard and clearly the packaging has greatly improved. I think their boxes used to be covered in this dragon and it used to have Vichy Gaming or something all over it because they were sponsoring that team at the time but this is much cleaner, much more professional looking and super super awesome. So th that's the little fun little story between me and Dare You. Like they're the first ever gaming mechanical keyboard. Uh, the first ever mechanical keyboard experience was with this brand. I mean, it wasn't a very good one, but I think in six years, mechanical keyboards, especially budget mechanical keyboards have improved so much. I would not, I doubt that this will give me any issues, especially in the long run as I test it as time goes on. Uh, but only time can tell, right? Okay, so this is the X Tech from the future talking, as you can tell from the keyboards already being unboxed. But I'd just like to say, if you wanna see the full on in-depth review where I give you a proper conclusive verdict as to whether to buy these keyboards that I just unboxed here today, uh, make sure you subscribe for that. And if you think this video was enjoyable or helpful, make sure you like and comment because it really helps this channel in the algorithm. And just comment a bunch of keywords because that will like boost the channel. And the more people watch my channel, the more I grow. And the more I grow, the more likely I can be able to give away this keyboard to one of you guys or even a better one than this, like a $600 one, maybe in the future, maybe in two years, I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with the unboxing. Anyway, let's open this up. What we have here today is the EK861, which is wireless poker size mechanical keyboard. And this is the EK871, which is a wireless 71%, 71 key mechanical keyboard. I'm guessing that's what the 871 means, the 771 keys. A couple of eye-catching features with these two keyboards. So one of the things is that it's Bluetooth. So that's something to keep in mind. Bluetooth is super, super dope. Uh, second thing is it comes with really nice PPT keycaps. Like these are some of the nicest damn mechanical keyboard, keyboard keycaps I've ever seen comes stock with a keyboard. This one's got a red, green, and white kind of joker aesthetic and also has blue switches. I'm not sure what blue switches they are, but they are blue switches. And this one right here has a gray, red, and white switch color uh, mechanical keycap combination, which will be perfect for someone like MKBHD. But what I love is it's a PBT, which is awesome for like a uh, the default stock keycap set. And what I also really like is that professional, they look neat. The packaging itself looks professional, looks neat. It looks like, you know, it's like Dare You is clearly not trying to be a gaming brand here. They're trying to be a brand selling nice keyboards that don't look cheap and tacky. So uh, good job Dare You, very nice packaging. Let's uh, take a look at the box first, shall we? So starting off with the back of the box. Okay, so on the back of the box, we've got some of the specs and some of the key features they want to talk about. So number one, it's wireless. So yeah, it supports Bluetooth connectivity you can just connect it via Bluetooth and have a wireless keyboard, which is nice. I mean, I'm not sh actually sure what the price point is. I should probably Google it, but we'll do that in a bit. It's got high purity PPT keycaps. I already talked about that. It's got a built-in lithium battery, 1900 milliamps, which is actually a pretty big battery considering this is just a mechanical keyboard. And it's got adjustable magnetic feet. That's actually quite interesting. So instead of like the kick out feet that you have on pretty much every keyboard, it's got feet that are magnetic. So, okay. So the, it comes with a nice, protective shroud and the keyboard itself comes wrapped in this nice little bit of plastic. We'll put that to the side first because you know every tech unboxer has to be a little bit of a tease. They never show you the thing straight up. We come with a set of spare keycaps. I mean that's greatly appreciated. We've got some we've got this random button which I don't know what it actually means but we've got arrow keys, a replacement enter key. I guess if you don't like the big bright red enter, you can replace that. That's actually very thoughtful of them. And you've got a new spacebar key. I think they're giving you the option of basically either having red, gray, and white, or just gray and white, which is nice. It's greatly appreciated. Inside, it comes with a nice USB-C cable, really long. It's gold plated. It's actually a useless feature. Gold plating on a USB cable is pointless. I thought we were over that. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for accessories. Underneath here, we don't get much. We've got a keycap puller that's orange. Nice. 
Linus Tech Tips will appreciate that. But I am not Linus Tech Tips. I'm too small to be Linus Tech Tips, unfortunately. If you want me to become Linus Tech Tips one day, make sure you subscribe and like. That will really, really help out the video in the algorithm. Uh, even if you think it doesn't, it does help. So, okay. Anyway, let's take a look at the keyboard itself. So, on the back, we've got kind of a quick instructions guide. We've got a quick instructions guide. Now, I think what this means is you can save profiles to three different computers and devices. So, if you, say, have this connected to your phone, tablet, and your PC, you can have it connected to each profile. You know, one profile is connected to one thing. So, if you are using your tablet, PC, or whatever, you can switch quickly between the, those three. So, that's very convenient. Very, very nice. Got a USB-C port here. The number of, like, budget-friendly stuff... Uh, without a USB-C cable, the, the number of tech items I still get that don't have a USB-C cable is too damn high. Like, we're in 2021. The USB thing kind of got really popular in 2018, 2019. It should be on everything by now. And it's just, I think it will be cheaper at this point for people just put, for manufacturers to just put USB-C on everything. But for some reason, many things still don't have USB-C on it. I guess maybe because it's an old stock, it's an old delivery, an old order. But the recent Seagate hard drive I ordered, which was 5 terabytes, still uses micro USB, which blows my mind. Okay, so this keyboard has brown switches and we're gonna give it we're gonna type on it a little bit okay so hmm okay that's actually it's actually quite weird. So these brown switches definitely don't feel like average brown switches. They feel more like, I'm not going to say membrane because that kind of offends it. This is definitely a mechanical switch. This definitely is mechanical. But it feels top ray, like, it feels like a top ray switch or like a Roma G switch. It doesn't feel like a traditional brown switch with very light actuation. But that's not a bad thing. I think a lot of people like a very stiff actuation on their brown switches because it's a tactile switch. It's kind of feel tactile, right? But it definitely feels very snappy and highly sprung. Almost like a membrane keyboard because it bounces up really, really quickly. I'm not sure who made the switches on these things. It's made by Dare You themselves. So that's quite interesting. These are brown switches. They definitely have the basic general characteristics of brown switches, the same travel, the same actuation point, but they are stiffer. In terms of smoothness of these brown switches, they're not the smoothest. I mean, these aren't super fancy switches, but they don't they don't sound super quiet. They're not the smoothest. They, there's definitely a bit of friction noise in there, but but it's not bad. It's not worse than Cherry MX, which is honestly kind of the default level. So there's there's nothing wrong there. They don't feel as cheap as cow cow switches, like the basic cow switches, not the the box cow switches. And they definitely have a very interesting feel to them. I'll probably need a bit more time kind of testing it out to really give you a proper uh, analysis of how I feel with them because they're kind of confusing to me. But it's definitely a unique brown switch. Uh, anyway, moving on with the keyboard on the back, we've got these magnetic feet here that I talked about just now so unlike your normal keyboard instead of having a instead of having a kick feet that kicks around you can just have a magnetic feet that goes like this oh wow that's actually quite smart so you basically have three total height adjusts you can have it without any magnetic feet and you can have it perfectly flat and flush to the table which is fine and then you can have it in one orientation so this way uh, where the kind of the gaps align with the little nubbins inside goes into the hole perfectly flush and you get one level of height adjust, which is nice. And then finally, if you turn it around 90 degrees, you can kind of do that and have it angled instead of flush to the magnetic base, which is going to give you even more aggressive height adjustments, which I think is super dope. Like this is actually quite cool. Like it's a little bit of smart design. It's definitely more satisfying to use than the magnetic, than the normal kick feet. And I don't really know whether it's a better solution than the kick feet, but it is. It is a solution that works well, so okay, let's just test out how good the stabilizers are. They're actually surprisingly good. Like, consistency of the sound across the spacebar is pretty good, pretty decent. I like that. I like that. That's a good sign, which means the stabilizers must be pretty good. What kind of stabilizer does it use? Does it use a cherry stabilizer or does it use a... Oh! Yep, it uses a cherry stabilizer, uh, a cherry style stabilizer, not a wire bar stabilizer. So that's interesting. I'm actually quite interested if I loop the keyboard switches in here, how would they sound? Would it be like a great improvement? Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next keyboard. We spent enough time on this one. It's pretty good, 71%. Okay, so the next keyboard we've got here is the Dare You EK861. And uh, it's pretty much the same keyboard, but a different layout. So a bit smaller, less keys. It has a red, green, and white keycap color combination. I don't... It's not really to my tastes. Anyway, let's move on. And we're, we're greeted with the keyboard, obviously. Same shroud, same treatment, wrapped in a little bit of plastic as well. So nothing, nothing unexpected here. Let's put that back. And um, these have blue switches. And do these come with the spare keycaps as well? Yep, they do. And the red keycaps, that's, that's, that's nice. And instead of a black USB-C cable, you get a nice white USB-C cable. So. It's also gold plated. Okay, so these are the blue switches. They are Dare You branded again. I mean, blue switches is gonna mean it's clicky, right? So let's give it a shot.
I don't really know how to feel about them. These are not as interesting to me as the browns. These definitely just feel like normal blue switches, but they also don't feel like the really fancy, super loud cowl navy switches there. Blue switches, the normal click, I think these are the normal click bar blue switches, not the click jackets. So yeah, they're, they're definitely just a normal click bar. Okay, so this and the brown switch have a very similar characteristic of being very highly sprung, like a membrane keyboard. Not in a bad way. So membrane keyboards are bad because they're squishy and mushy when they bottom out. Membrane keyboards have do have a characteristic that a lot of people like, and that is when you press them and you actuate them, the moment you release it really pops back up really, really quickly. Things like Gateron switches or Cherry MX reds, you do notice that, that that time it takes or that aggression it pops up isn't as satisfying, it isn't as fast or crisp or snappy. Uh, and that returning to the original position is something that, that is noticeably sharp and crisp on these two switches. And then that's something to, to keep in mind. However, I don't really like the sound of these blues. Definitely harsh and very, if you're Chinese, you know what I mean when I say ci er. It's like really sharp and it's really harsh on the ears. It's kind of this crisp, a little bit jarring click. So I just checked the prices of these two keyboards. The EK871 is 99 Singapore dollars, the EK861 is 89 Singapore dollars. And for their price, it's a very interesting, interesting prospect because you get a lot of keyboard for your money. You got PVT keycaps, the ability to connect to three Bluetooth devices, which is really big for a lot of users. USB-C, you've got magnetic feed, you've got pretty decent key switches. Like apparently these switches come pre-lubed from the factory, so that is actually definitely a bonus feature. You've got a reasonably okay backlight. Like it's packed full of features, you get accessories as well. And for the price that's coming in at, it's quite aggressive, but it's also in a very competitive field. Like things like the RGBM Pro kind of keyboards do exist, the RK61, SK61, all these do exist. So you have to keep that in mind when you're deciding whether this keyboard is right for you. And as for a conclusive statement as to whether this keyboard, these keyboards are going to be right for you, I think you need to wait for my full review, which will be coming in two to three weeks. Because when that full review comes out, I will have used it long enough time to discover if there's any sort of weird quirks and features and any sort of problems or bonus features with these things that I won't be able to cover in this first initial impressions unboxing video. So make sure you subscribe for that because that will be coming really, really quickly. But I think I'm going to end the video off here. It took me 15 minutes to just record this one take uh, and I have had multiple takes. So if you appreciate the effort for me to make this video, make sure you like and subscribe because it really, really helps my channel in the algorithm. And if possible, comment a bunch of keywords as well because why not, right? It will definitely help my channel do well in the algorithm. The more people see my videos, the more I grow and the more I grow, the more likely I'll be able to give away a keyboard like this or even more expensive custom ones in the future but who knows anyway that's it i'm gonna end the video here thank you guys so much for watching goodbye